Well, Sean and Leon, earlier today, Maryland Governor Wes Moore said that there were heroes here on the Francis Scott Key Bridge who stopped traffic just before the vessel hit the bridge. We've been able to obtain some police radio traffic that indicates that the police had about 90 seconds to be able to stop that traffic. They had 90 seconds of a warning before the vessel hit the bridge. Now, the governor's also said this is a search and rescue operation, even at this hour. But the Associated Press is reporting that the six missing workers are now presumed dead. At 1.30 this morning, a live stream camera focused on the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore recorded the moments a massive container ship heading out of the port suddenly lost power. A work crew of eight with Brawner Builders is on the span fixing potholes. The video shows thick black smoke suddenly coming from the ship's smokestack and then the awful collision. The crew knew it was in trouble and radioed a mayday. That gave Maryland Toll Facilities Police time to stop traffic. I'd hold all traffic on the key bridge. Uh, there's a ship approaching that just lost their steering. So until you get that under control, we got to stop all traffic. I'm thankful for the folks who, who once, the, you know, once the warning came up and once notification came up uh, that there was a mayday, who literally by being able to stop cars from coming over the bridge, uh, these people are heroes. They saved lives last. They saved lives last night. Right. It's unclear if word ever got to the work crew on the bridge that the ship was in trouble and they needed to evacuate the span. There are eight individuals. Uh, six are being uh, searched for right now. One is at um, was taken to the hospital, and one is uh, not in the hospital that we're speaking to. As word spread, the bridge had collapsed into the Patapsco River. Authorities immediately asked nearby jurisdictions to send rescue boats and dive teams. The Coast Guard responded with ships and a helicopter. The Port of Baltimore is now closed. No vessels will be coming or going for the foreseeable future as the Army Corps of Engineers figures out a way to clear the shipping lane. For every single one of us who are Marylanders, the words that the key bridge is gone, it, it still shakes us because for over for 47 years, that's all we've known. Now, we do know that two of those eight workers did survive. One, though, was in critical condition, taken to a nearby trauma unit. Uh, and we know that the other worker that survived did not need hospitalization. And we heard earlier today from officials that they were talking to that worker. And so that worker must have some very good information as to uh, what they knew about that bridge approach and whether or not they had gotten any warning. Sean and Leon, that's the latest here from the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Now back into you. You know, thank goodness those two were okay, but our thoughts and prayers simply for those who are still missing tonight. Just devastating when you see the images. And for them and their families. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you, Paul. Paul. Let's take a live look now. No, Speaking of our thoughts and prayers for the families, um, this is a prayer switch vigil switch that's happening switch right now at the Mount Olive switch Baptist switch Church of Turner switch Station. Switch we understand that Baltimore's Mayor Brandon Scott is there alongside uh, community faith leaders and neighbors as well. Yeah, wanna, well now, as we mentioned, sure. six people are still unaccounted for That's following right, that bridge collapse. But according to an AP report, the company that they work for says they believe that the workers are dead. The Francis Scott Key Bridge is a major commuter route, not only for people traveling around Baltimore, but people going up and down the East Coast. 31,000 people cross this bridge on a daily basis. Today's collapse is already causing major travel troubles. Transportation reporter Adam Tusk continues our team coverage this evening. He is in Stony Beach, uh, which is in Anne Arundel County. And uh, Adam's going to take a look at the effect this is going to have on transportation. And Adam, it's going to have an effect for some time to come, right? Uh, Leon and Sean, we are talking about potentially years of impacts because this is a 1.6 mile long bridge. As those of us who have driven over this bridge know, it was not a small bridge and you just don't put another bridge in its place. It's going to take a long time to repair what was done here today. In the meantime, we can zoom in and show you the ship that is still right there at the Patapsco River and you can see the mangled wreckage as we push in closer here and you can see how the the ship right there is just twisted up with the bridge still. This is going to be a delicate operation to remove all of that debris. And you see the shipping containers on the front of that boat right there, that ship uh, that continued to be just frozen in place from the moment that that impact happened this morning. And this community here is shaken. 
In an instant, everything changed. Holy, uh, you know, and it was like the, the bridge is gone. Carrie Johnson says her fiance heard the loud bang of the collapse early this morning, but it wasn't until the sun came up that the true devastation was revealed. And it's gone. Uh, you know, the, the, what you typically see of your, your everyday skyline is, is just gone. A Barbara Bunn says she's been over the bridge by car and under by cruise ship. And it always made her nervous. I don't like crossing the bridges. I don't like cross, driving across the Bay Bridge. I mean, I don't like heights anyway, but uh, even going under it, it was a little scary being on, a, it's on the cruise ships. Everybody gets up on the front to watch it. Pictures from Baltimore City fire crews show the scene up close. The weight of the bridge and the wreckage tangible through the photos. Meanwhile, the transportation impact will be long lasting. 31,000 vehicles per day use the key bridge, 11.3 million vehicles per year. Maryland Transportation Secretary Paul Wiedefeld says I-95 and 895, two tunnels under the Baltimore Harbor, will likely pick up the spillover traffic. About double that use the Harbor Tunnel and double that again use the Fort McHenry Tunnel. So basically we don't have those two other options. Uh, we'll, have, we'll make sure that we have as much uh, personnel out there to deal with any incidents because as you know that can cause the backups very quickly. Signs over I-95 as far north as Delaware warn drivers about the bridge closure. Transit alternatives will be studied here. Now, years ago, when a ship hit and knocked down a bridge in Tampa, it took over six years to rebuild a bridge in that location. And as time goes on, prayers continue for a miracle for those still missing. It's been, you know, way too many hours now. So, you know, that chance is getting smaller. That window is getting smaller and smaller for survival. And, and it's sad. It's really very sad. An early morning tragedy that has rocked communities all along the water. And back here now live as we take a look at that second pier of what was the Key Bridge, and you can see the wreckage there. And as we pan over back to the ship, uh, you can start to see the front of the ship kind of leaning down, absorbing the weight of that bridge, uh, which is clearly gonna take a lot of time to pick through all the pieces to make sure everything's okay. By the way, we need to know what's going on with the crew. Uh, the helicopters are still circling here, obviously looking for any signs in the water here. Uh, the Patapsco River that leads out to the Chesapeake Bay. And guys, from a transportation impact, think about if we lost the southeastern part of our beltway. That's mm -hmm. essentially what's happening here in Baltimore. 695 is the Baltimore beltway. And so the fact that the key bridge is gone, all of that traffic that would usually come in this direction is probably going to go through Baltimore or to the western side of the Baltimore Beltway, and that will go through the Towson area. So the transportation impact and the distribution of traffic as it comes through here, that's going to have a big impact for a long, long time. And you don't just put a bridge back here. It's going to take likely more than a year, maybe two years to get a bridge uh, put back in place here, guys. You know, yeah. And not, not just for car drivers, because truck traffic that can't go through the tunnels right. through Baltimore, you were taking that route on the Key Bridge to get around, and now that's got to be reconfigured. That's right. The, the Key Bridge, that's right, Leon. The Key Bridge uh, allowed hazardous material to go across it. That's why that can't go through the tunnels, so you have to figure out where all of that can go now. It's going to end up somewhere downtown or through neighborhoods, and we know what the fallout from that will likely be, too. People will be, you know, upset that yeah. it's going to come through, but they've got a lot to figure out there. Adam Tuss with the latest for us tonight. Adam, thank you. Thanks, Adam. Our team coverage continues now with more on how exactly this tragedy happened and what it means to the shipping industry. News 4's Mark Seagraves joins us now live. Mark, I know you spoke with an expert in maritime history and you covered an incident in 2022 after a large cargo ship ran aground in the Chesapeake Bay. What have you learned about today's crash? Yes, yeah, Sean, timing is everything in this disaster. I spoke with Sal Macagliano, who follows the shipping industry very closely, and he tells me the power loss happened at the worst possible moment. Unfortunately, the loss of power at this exact moment was the problem because a few seconds later, uh, they're under the bridge and perhaps run aground. The timing just seems to have been the worst possible for what happened. Sal Mercagliano, maritime historian and host of the YouTube show, What's Going On With Shipping, has reviewed the video of the moments leading up to the catastrophic moment when the ship struck the bridge. The first sign of trouble seen in the video is the ship going dark, apparently losing power. That means every system on the vessel went offline, and that is the worst feeling for a mariner on board. 
Silence and darkness is the worst. That means you've lost propulsion, you've lost steering, you've lost control of the vessel. Seconds later, the lights come back on. What we're not sure about is whether or not that is the main power coming back on or the emergency power coming back on. If it's emergency power, that means they don't have control. Then thick black smoke is seen coming from the ship's smokestack. That's usually an indication that they're trying to back down the engine, that they're, they're perhaps maybe wanting to try to slow down and stop. We know that they do drop the port anchor because we see it down in the video footage, uh, but at the speed they were going, which is about eight knots, uh, that anchor would not do anything. It would just drag on the bottom. Uh, that was a desperate move to try to stop the vessel. Officials have said the ship was moving at eight knots when it hit the bridge. 100,000 tons at eight knots is a lot of a momentum, and it's very hard to control it when you lose uh, propulsion and rudder control. The impact of the indefinite closure of the Port of Baltimore will be felt across the nation. The ships that are in Baltimore are stuck and the ships waiting to get into Baltimore are either going to have to wait or divert. And we're talking about uh, tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollar of impact of cargo. It's not just a matter of we'll offload in Norfolk or Philadelphia. You need the facilities to be able to take them. Uh, cargo is going to have to be rerouted into Baltimore that was scheduled to arrive there. And again, the coal and grain that come out through that port is not going to be able to be taken up in other facilities. The facilities just don't exist. Now, Sean and Leon, as we learned during the Ever Forward incident, the equipment that's needed to remove the debris from the ship and from the river will have to be brought in from up and down the eastern seaboard, and all that will have to happen before the port can reopen. Boy, I mean, just the, the ripple effects and the fallout, oh. we know they're huge. We heard Adam mention it sort of a moment ago. What about the ship itself? What do we know about the crew and, and who's on board? Yeah, we heard the NTSB say they're trying to interview the crew and get an assessment of who's on the book. Ships like the Dolly have what's known as a forward collision area, which is designed to take some impact. Crews will be inspecting the hull from the inside and out. That might be delayed because, as we see, there's debris from the bridge resting on the top of the ship. One thing to watch for is if we start to see any sheen on the water that would indicate a fuel leak. Mm -hmm. You'll recall again with mm -hmm. the Ever Forward, the Coast Guard surrounded the ship with booms to contain any leaking fluids that might have come out. We were lucky with the Ever Forward yeah. that there were no fuel leaks during that uh, incident. And let's hope there are no fuel leaks here, but there's a lot of to sort out and clean up there for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yep. Right. Thank you.